So, Half-Life 2 RTX demo just came out. As the name implies, this is designed with the express purpose of working with Nvidia's RTX GPUs, and high-end ones at that. Sadly, the only RTX GPU I have is the RTX 3050 laptop, which… good luck getting path tracing running on that. So instead, I have the next best alternative, getting it to run on two different Radeon GPUs which I have access to. The Radeon RX 7800 XT is based on RDNA 3 architecture, whose RT capabilities are a step up from RDNA 2, but is still regarded as quite poor even relative to Nvidia's second generation offerings. The Radeon RX 9070 XT is based on the brand new RDNA 4 architecture, with ray tracing being one of the most marketed improvements over last gen. However, path tracing will likely still be a headache. I've been so I've been trying to get Half Life, I wanted to get Half Life 2 as a, like an example to test my 7800 XT in normal game versus RTX game. However, when I tried to do Half Life 2, it kept messing with my display's gamma, and after trying to correct it, like restart the system, I tried to boot Half Life 2, and the whole system crashed, and it didn't even post. So, so I tried like, we like turn the power back on and off, that didn't work. So, so I moved one RAM stick here, and now the system is posted. I managed to get the system to post with one stick and without expo. After that, I put the second 16GB stick back in and was fine. I then enabled expo and ran memtests for 30 cycles without any errors. Not sure what happened there, but at least nothing is broken. Yet. Okay, after all that nonsense, I actually managed to load into Half-Life 2 once Welcome. again without any errors. Anyway, as you can tell, the frame rate here is very good, we're getting over 300 FPS in this area. Any more GP can run off like 2 super well. You don't really need me to show you that. After establishing that the 20 year old game runs well on a GPU that is one and a half years old, I moved on to the RTX Discombobulator. So this is going to go very well. And by very well, I mean we're running at 1080p using the lowest setting available and TAU performance. So yeah, Half-Life 2 RTX, so playing this at the absolute lowest settings and it's surprisingly playable, although it does not look good. We're running at TAU performance to get this level quality at 1080p and yeah, <laughs> it is, it, it becomes not very pleasant and just take out this guy. Part of my surprise could be due to me massively lowering my expectations from when I did Portal RTX a few months ago, and I only stuck to 1080p testing. Remember, this is with the lowest amount of path tracing enabled. Aside from the fact that the image is noisier than Concord across the Atlantic Ocean, I was decently impressed by the lighting. But hey, at least we can get some nice path trace lighting here. And the fire effects are just immaculate, immaculate. And now we're here we're getting, again, 30s. Do I have to be turn to even like quality? It still doesn't look good. And we're getting 25 FPS. 25 F 23, 23, 17. With the RX 7800 XT coughing on cryptid sludge, I then decided to move on to the RX 9070 XT. On paper, this should slaughter the last gen card in terms of ray tracing performance, but will that matter in the NVIDIA RTX Remix school? And you can tell I was successful because the AMD Adrenaline software is already trying to be up with AI. Oh, well that's not good. After AMD drivers got out of the timeout corner, I launched Half-Life 2 RTX at 1080p with the same settings as before. Okay, now I've got the 9070 XT in the system and we're still at 1080p and I assume the lowest settings available. Yeah, it's just we it's just we defaulted to TA performance once again. Oh again, again 90s, again, again 80s here. So I think we might have room to actually turn up the resolution scale. Uh no. I don't think that's happening. 24 FPS with the 9070 XT <laughs> is a 
terrible. Like, that's just genuinely terrible. And keep in mind, this is the best GP that AMD has when it comes to ray tracing. Performance definitely felt better, but considering that normally 3970 XT is meant to be around RTX 5070 in ray tracing, not reaching 60 FPS at 1080p with the lowest path tracing settings is quite shocking. It's very cinematic at least, if you like cinematic frame rates. And finally, out of curiosity, I turned the path tracing settings up to high. 15 FPS! Although hilariously unplayable, this was still better than my Portal RTX experience as the textures didn't start glitching into magenta blobs. And to answer the burning question, can Radeon GPUs play Half-Life 2 RTX? Well, yes, if you are willing to massacre your ice hats with TAAU and don't care about going any higher than 1080p. Hope you enjoyed this Radeon RTX slideshow, like and subscribe to help this second channel grow and I'll see you all next time.